Welcome, and thank you for joining us for today's Dealer On webinar, How Google Plus Lightbox Advertising Plus Video Pre-Roll Equals Fireworks. My name is Eliana Raggio, and I'll be your moderator today, and today's webinar is being presented by Dealer On. And for anyone who isn't familiar with Dealer On, well, we're an award-winning website development company and digital agency, best known for our search engine optimization, best-in-class customer service, and our award-winning website designs, including the newly launched Chameleon Responsive Website Platform. We're so committed to lead conversion, optimization, and customer service that Dealeron is the only company in the industry to offer a money-back lead guarantee program. So does your website company guarantee you a 50% lift in leads? Well, then maybe you should check us out at Dealeron.com. And we have a great show in store for you today. We're very pleased to have three amazing presenters today. First, Shalini Jarawala is Strategic Partner Manager of Channel Sales at a little company you might have heard of, Google. She's based out of the Google New York City office. Shalini has been working in high tech for the past 10 years and has held various marketing, sales, enablement, and business development roles at companies such as Google, Uyala, Salesforce.com, and Evernote. This year, Shalini has already spoken at the Innovative Dealer Summit and at a digital dealer workshop and conference. And she's always looking to provide actionable takeaways to position dealerships for success tomorrow and beyond. Joining Shalini Jarawala is Phil Sura, who started the automotive division of Unity Works Media, a web video company supporting over 2,000 dealers and recognized as the video pioneer in the automotive space. Spending the last 10 years developing cutting-edge video strategies for dealers across the country, Phil has earned the nickname Mr. Video from his peers. Furthermore, Phil has presented at 14 of the 15 digital dealer conventions, various regional sessions, and numerous webinars. He has been a regular contributor to Digital Dealer Magazine for the past six years, and Phil can be reached at phil at unityworksmedia.com. And to share a real-world overview of how video pre-roll has impacted his operations, we'll also be hearing from Francisco Diaz Rivera. Poncho, he's a true car guy. Poncho has been in the retail automotive space for 20 years, 17 of them as a general manager. Poncho runs Esserman International in Miami-Dade County, Florida, which is consistently number one in sales and CSI for all three brands that they represent, Acura, Kia, and Volkswagen. Poncho has been married for 33 years and has two adult children, one who is following in his father's footsteps into the car business. Now, during the presentation, if you have any questions, please use the question feature located in the corner of your screen to submit them. At the end of the presentation, we'll answer those questions of general interest. If we're unable to get to your question live, don't worry, we'll respond by email later today. Also, don't forget, a link to download a copy of this webinar recording will also be emailed to you later today for your reference. Please feel free to share it with friends and colleagues. And I also want to let you know that Dealeron is excited to announce their involvement in the upcoming Dealer Think Tank in Washington, D.C., August 14th. The Dealer Think Tank is spearheaded by a handful of dynamic subject experts and thought leaders who travel the country providing strategies, discussing ideas, challenging ideology, and creating solutions for real-world problems facing the automotive industry. The think tanks have been garnering tremendous praise for their intensely informative, fun-filled education workshops that educate everyone from the greenest of the green to the most seasoned industry veterans. So don't miss it. If you haven't gotten your ticket yet, well, Dealeron's here to help with an exclusive discount code that'll score you $100 savings off the ticket price. Just use the discount code on the screen when you register. And for more information, go to dealerthinktank.com. And guess what? Our good friends at Unity Works are giving away a fantastic prize today on the webinar. One of you lucky webinar attendees is going to win a great prize for your dealership. Someone out there is going to score a model video landing page free for three months, plus an About Us video from Unity Works Media. This is going to provide you with a highly engaging campaign destination page that will increase your conversion rate. This prize is valued at $775, but you have to be on the live broadcast to win it, so stay tuned for details after today's presentation, and you could be walking away with this amazing prize today. And at the conclusion of the webinar, you're going to receive a short survey, so fill it out, because we're always looking for great feedback from our audience. Today we're going to randomly select a couple of people from all those completed surveys to also win 
some Google Prizes. So let's get started. Let's learn how Google plus Lightbox Advertising plus Video Pre-Roll is going to equal fireworks. Shalini, how are you? Let's say hi to you first. Shalini, are you there? Yes, sorry. I'm doing great. How are you? Very well. Thank you so much for being here today. We're very excited whenever we get to hear from somebody from Google. So thank you so much for being here today. And audience, I want you to know, she is going to present a whole bunch of stuff that's going to let you know about um, some items that Google has that can definitely help you, as well as the recently launched Lightbox Advertising. And I have to say, I know that a lot of dealerships are not using Lightbox Advertising yet, so I'm pretty excited to really introduce this to a lot of dealers today. So we're going to be hearing from Shalini in just a little bit. We also have, of course, Phil Sura on the line. Hello, Mr. Video. How are you? Hey, I'm doing fantastic. And thanks for allowing us to come on your show. And we're excited about some of the content that we have. Oh, I know you are. And you know what? I know video is the hottest thing going. So I'm really excited to find out how much the dealerships out there are using video right now and also to explain to them what they could be doing with video. And I'm really excited to have, for the very first time in Dealer On webinar series history, we have a general manager on our webinar stage, as you will, our virtual stage. So, Poncho, thank you so much for being here today. And you're going to be providing real-world excerpts on how this whole strategy worked for you and Esterman International, and I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you so much for being here, Pancho. Yeah, well, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm honored to have been asked to share this <laughs> time with you this afternoon, and uh, I'll explain how we share and include video pre-roll as part of our advertising strategy. Yes, and so we have a lot of information to get to today. So, Phil, why don't I throw it back over to you, and why don't you tell everyone about the kinds of things we are going to be learning about? Hey, thanks, Eliana. And as mentioned, we've got a, a number of presenters. We have a lot of new content. And the core focuses for today is really laid out on this page. Number one, what's video pre-roll? That's still fairly new to a lot of retail automotive dealers. Uh, number two, what about video site mapping and video enriched landing pages? How, how can that help a, a dealership? Uh, number three, what's new with Google? And we're actually going to, uh, to touch on some concepts tied to parts and service, and which segues into the uh, fourth bullet point, can Google help drive service? And then we'll open it up for Q&A. So we've got an exciting show. Now, as a starting point, and uh, Pancho is, has been acquainted uh, with our company, and I've been a friend of his now for about six years. And a month ago, Pancho and I were talking about digital advertising, and he made an interesting comment. And this is a quote that he shared with me. I believe that we're at the tipping point in moving to digital advertising. And the tipping point uh, book is one of my all-time favorite reads. And if you haven't read it, Malcolm Gladwell's the author. And so whenever I hear of tipping point, I think of that book. And there are three characteristics of a tipping point. Number one, it's contagious. So in other words, it spreads pretty quickly. Uh, number two, little causes have big effects. It's not gradual and it's dramatic. So with that as kind of an intro, Pancho, why do you think that we're at the tipping point as far as moving or as far as your operation moving to digital from a traditional advertising perspective? What, what are your thoughts on that? So. The question that I struggle with each month as a, de you know, as a dealer running three franchises is specific, specifically like why is, you know, why pre-roll uh, is included in my advertising budget? Like w why am I including pre-roll in my advertising budget? And then each month I first ask myself, what is the major obstacle that blocks my, you know, blocks my path to the objective that I have for each brand? And if I pull everyone on this call, the vast majority will say that their biggest obstacle is we don't have enough ups. What we do when we're in front of a customer is not the issue. Uh, it's it, because most of us are car guys and we know how to fix those type of issues. The problem is getting in front of a customer. You know, what, how do we generate ups? And here, and and so I'm going to give you a long answer to your question here. That here are the challenges that face us today. 
our floor traffic has been redu uh, drastically reduced. Uh, NDA says that we're only getting, uh, uh, you know, the average buyer is only visiting a dealership only 4.5 times uh, be before making a purchase. Uh, today, it's been reduced down to 1.5. It used to be 4.5 before making a purchase. Now it's down to 1.5. Uh, our buyers consume media differently. Uh, our brand loyalty is low. Uh, I know we have someone from Google here. Last year they did a study uh, where they conducted a survey and they found that as much as eight cars are on a car buyer's consideration list before making a purchase and only 25% of them remain loyal. Our media is more fragmented. Uh, the cost of traditional media is so expensive. So. On this call, what we're not going to tell you is what to do, but what to ask. We're all searching for answers, but you need to ask the right question. Uh, when Google bought YouTube uh, in 2006, they said that we were in the beginning of an internet video revolution, and I think that was the tipping point. Google knew that YouTube was going to take them somewhere, but Google did not know where because it wasn't up to Google. Social behavior was in charge. And all the advertisers, like us here on this call, had to react to our buyer's new shopping habits. So why are we on this call? We are reacting, and we need to figure out what are the questions we need to ask? What are the metrics that we need to look at that are leading indicators to sales? We are in the midst of a video revolution. And video pre-roll is just another avenue to achieve incremental sales, and I mean incremental sales, and place your product in front of the relevant buyers. So when your agency tells you you cannot abandon airing your commercials or your radio spots, they're probably right, but for the wrong reasons. And we'll review a few key metrics later when Phil, you know, and discussion points uh, later on. Thank, thanks, Pancho. Great way to uh, set up the entire session. Now, some of you may have been acquainted with a release from Google at the end of last year. And this kind of ties in with, with a couple of the points Pancho was just addressing. And at the end of each year, Google goes through an elaborate uh, sur survey of people that have purchased cars. And according to these findings, as Pancho had just indicated, everything's changed over the last four or five years. And the average consumer today is gathering tremendous amounts of information. As a matter of fact, the average person is reviewing 24 touch points in the process of identifying 1.2 or 1.5 dealerships to physically visit. So let's get into video pre-roll. And before we do that, Eliana, I think you have a poll question that that you'd like to throw out to the audience. I would, real fast. We're going to get to this first poll question, audience. If you wouldn't mind, we'd love your interaction on this one. Please let us know the answer to this question. Are you currently using video pre-roll? It's a simple question. Please select one of the following answers. Is it yes, and I'm seeing great results? Is it yes, but I'm not sure what the results are? No, but it's something I do want to try, or no, Management would never spend money on that. Or what the heck is video pre-roll? <laughs> and the funny thing is, I know that you probably have all seen video pre-roll, and you just didn't know that that's what it was called. Um, while the votes are coming in, I'll just let you know, just yesterday, <laughs> Phil, you'll get a kick out of this. My husband um, was on Facebook or something like that, and he clicked on some video to see some, you know, baby playing with a puppy or something, you know. It was one of those cute little <laughs> videos that you find on your, your Facebook page. And um, so he clicked on it, and there was an advertisement before the video played. And I don't know why there was an ad before it, but that ad, you know. So he said, why is there an ad before this video? I'm like, I have no idea why they would add video pre-roll on that. And he's like, what did you call it? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> he was not so too pleased. <laughs> Today, Eliana, is he listening in? To no, no, video? I made him get the heck oh. out. <laughs> Don't be a distraction. You know, I like to do these things all by myself. But, but um, yeah, he didn't know what it was called either. So I think that a lot of people don't know. As a matter of fact, you know what? We'll find out.
right now. Let me close this poll and share the results, and let's see how many people do know what video pre-roll is. All right? Well, as I suspected, a, a large number of people don't know what video pre-roll is. So, Phil, you're going to tell them what it is, right? Absolutely. Okay, well, 20... Next slide. Okay, excellent. 26% of today's audience actually don't know what video pre-roll is. They said, what's video pre-roll? So that's a quarter of our audience right there. Um, as for the rest of the answers, 17% of today's audience said, yes, they are using it, and they're seeing great results. 19% said they're using it, but they're not sure what the results are. 31%, the majority, said, no, they aren't using video pre-roll yet, but they are looking to try it. It is something that they do want to try, which is great. And the remaining 7% said that, no, they don't think management would ever spend money on that. Well, you know what? Maybe they will after you tell them what you're about to learn. Right, Phil? <laughs> Absolutely. As a matter of fact, let's get into it. So, and Eliana, you did a good job of visualizing or, or explaining what pre-roll is. It's simply a commercial in advance of a video. And YouTube is the second largest search engine only behind uh, Google. A lot of folks aren't aware of that. So YouTube itself has become a very powerful opportunity for retailers. So here's the official definition. It's a promotional video that plays before whatever the video is that's been selected. Now, we're specifically today talking about uh, TrueView, which is focused primarily on at YouTube, the second largest search engine. And with, with this application, it's a five-second opt-out, 30-second spot. What that means is, and I'm sure if you've never heard the term pre-roll, you've experienced it, where you can opt out of these commercials after five seconds. Now, we typically run these 30 seconds in length, and the dealer would only pay the billable moment is only if the consumer or the prospect watches all 30 seconds of the pre-roll. So if it's a 20-second pre-roll spot, it's the all 20 seconds, so it's either the complete video pre-roll spot or 30 seconds, whichever is less. Now, there's still a huge benefit if the customer only watches five seconds. If you're specifically targeting in a geo-targeted area, which is what we do for the dealers, and you can do this on your own as a dealership, if, and if you're targeting a specific area, let's say a 20-mile radius around your store, or specific uh, zip codes, or if you're targeting, let's say, your DMA. And if you're also focused on automotive-related types of searches. And so what we typically would suggest if you're setting up a pre-roll campaign is to actually target customers that are involved only in automotive searches. So in the case of Poncho, he has an Acura store and a Kia store. So with Acura, we would target on the top line his brands, but we would also zero in on conquesting, if we're in that 20-mile radius, people that are looking for content tied to BMW, for example. We would also have broad automotive types of searches for people that are looking for maintenance uh, video-related content or uh, video shopping. We also have the ability to target, let's say, lifestyle. So if you know that you've got a brand that is tied into, let's say, a high percentage of people that are active in sports, you can zero in on that. So just pencil in, let's say, a percentage in each of these categories. Now, I've had some people ask, well, all that I want to do is focus on my brand only. That would be limiting the opportunities associated with pre-roll. And the recommendation would be, if you want to do that, weight these top categories heavier than the bottom ones. You also, as indicated at the bottom, can target specific keyword phrases and even dealer names. And so here's an example, and this is one of Poncho's stores. Here's an example of what pre-roll looks like. And so imagine, in this, this case, that it's a conquest type of focus. And so this is a inner uh, one of the uh, base Acuras, somebody's looking for a Camry, Camry content. So the pre-roll that you're about to see or the commercial 
it's exactly what we're focused on. It's a five-second opt-out, 30 seconds Click spot. on the video and take advantage of the incredible lease offer of just two fifty nine dollars a month on a new 2014 Acura ILX. Now at Esterman International Acura, unlock your driving potential in a bold and reliable Acura ILX. The clean lines and energetic performance have a long list of luxury features, including the multi-view rear camera, Bluetooth, and more. The ILX will make you want to start your next adventure today. Click now and take home the responsible and fun Acura ILX for just $2.59 a month at Esserman International Acura. Now, you probably noticed that there were hyperlinks or there was a call to action even in the first five seconds. Click here, click here, click here. We do that intentionally. We actually want to redirect these customers that are doing automotive-related searches, in this case for a Toyota, we want to redirect them to the website of the dealer. Now, what types of metrics should you be looking at? And this is an overview of some of the key areas that we look at. In this case, the spend for Acura for this month was $3,000. That accounted for 139,699 partial views. And so that, that means that 140,000 people for that type of spend watched uh, five seconds. Now, you may ask, okay, well, how many people actually watched all of the video? Out of the 140, 28,000, or 20% watched all 30 seconds. They elected to go beyond the five seconds, and they watched the entire 30 seconds because it got their attention. How many people clicked over to the website? Well, 1,500 or 1.11% of the 140,000 in the cost per click, and I, I don't want to confuse people, you don't pay on a cost per click plus the cost per completed view. The billable moment is the cost per completed view, but typically uh, what we'll do is we'll show the dealer what the cost per click is because most people are comfortable with pay-per-click or SEM types of campaigns. Now with that, I'm going to turn the meeting over to Poncho because those are the metrics as far as what we look at as far as evaluating. I'm going to let Poncho talk about how, what the impact was as far as did it actually sell cars. Yeah. Uh, in October is when we started uh, a pre-roll. And we, we jumped from that prior month was 6, then we went to 33. Uh, and you can see the numbers there. And in December, we went as far as eliminating. I had between the three brands. I mean, I have three the three brands. We do about a hundred grand in traditional media of television, broadcast, and cable. And we eliminated, and just uh, and we had a pretty good month. Um, it's the video video pre roll. What it does is it exposes brands. I mean, well, not brands. It exposes models within the brand that had been ignored. ILX had no regional support, had no national support, and I hadn't advertised any uh, commercials for ILX in the market. And anybody who has an Acura dealership knows that ILX is a tough cookie. Uh, but it it's just the, the problem today is that we have um, – well, I'll get into the metrics later, but, but the problem today is that the manufacturers don't expose all their models. And I find that pre-roll is a gap filler for where tier one falls short. And it can be done at a very inexpensive rate, and you can, and, uh, and there's, there's t uh, strategies that you can use that I think are helpful. So, Pancho, we actually set up a series of thousand dollar campaigns for your individual models and you've shared something with me that I'd like you to touch on that in your opinion the focus for a lot of these brands that you represent isn't accurate but it's going down into the individual models can you elaborate on that and I want everybody to and, and you touched on this but it's a key point you didn't sell a total of 33 Acres, just the ILX which was a newer introduction so Explain what your thoughts are as far as Acura or Kia is not as critical as drilling into the individual models. Well, the the issue is is that there's most the brand today 
Uh, I think branding, and so we can get into discussions as, as to power branding and branding. Uh, I think Kia has figured something out. And uh, they're very shrewd if you look at what they've done. Kia is focused when they want the soul, uh, 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 Goliath uh, focused, the agency focused on the model. They did the soul and they hit a demographic. And they hit that very young demographic, and they and they're talking to a specific demographic. Most of those people don't really are not buying a Kia; they're buying a Soul in their head. Same thing with Optima; they brand it specifically to the model. In internet strategies, what's so great about it is that you can target your demographic, and you can go after demos that haven't considered part of your, your model lineups that the brand just doesn't have the money to spread. Like some of these brands today have barely enough money to launch a, uh, a product. And so model-specific pre-rolls um, I think is a game changer. And um, basically it's a, it's a great uh, tactic in order to bring awareness up on models that have been dormant. That's it. Now, Pancho, if you could elaborate on one more piece, because I know a little bit of history, and I was shocked when you actually told me after the fact that you had carved out 105,000 in TV and cable, and you wanted to really see the impact of going digital. And you came back a little bit with VW. With Kia and Acura, you really didn't miss a heartbeat holding your market share. And yeah. I think one of your conclusions was, hey, pre-roll is something that you believe in, but we don't know everything. Why it would be a great opportunity for a brand like Acura and Kia, but not Volkswagen. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? Well, one of the things I couldn't understand why I wouldn't get traction, the same traction that I got on ILX. And, and, and let me tell you, sometimes um, uh, the consequences of what it doesn't do are, are questions that you need to ask yourself, and it's why. And then we dug in, and it was the demographics. The, the age demographic that we had, for example, on the Jetta was a lot older than what I thought. And they were not they were not seeing, it wasn't relevant, I don't, you know, there was no excitement. I, again, I'm using the, the, uh, um, the, the strategies with pre-roll almost to just put us on the consideration list within a market. Uh, I just believed that the ILX has a great value, it's an aspirational car, and the manufacturer wasn't doing its job. I didn't feel the manufacturer, uh, I, I, I believe the manufacturer gave up on the product. And so um, there was a way, you know, you just got to try to see if you can uh, show it to, to the people that are in the set that would, they would probably say, hey, I'd rather have that than having a Nissan Maxima, let's say. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so we served it up and we have different, you know, tactics that we use in order to, to uh, you know, drive traffic on those specific models. But um, pre-roll pre is is almost like a gap filler where the manufacturer falls short. Is really what I, I look at it. It's a it's a, it's a higher tier be um, uh, a higher tier strategy. It, it's counterintuitive, but it, it but that's really what it is. And a mistake that I from my, in my opinion, not everybody will agree with this, but in my opinion, I've seen some companies use pre-roll to brand, let's say, the dealership. And what I hear you saying is you think it's important to focus on the individual models with some type of offer and put some hooks out there so that the consumer that's in the game, in other words, they're in market shoppers, they're looking for video content, that you're actually queuing up something to have to get them to pause and take notice of who you guys are as well as the uh, individual models. Is that fair? Yeah. Yeah. And, and guys, what, what we're doing here is really having discussions. You know, no, no one can tell you that they have it figured out. What you do have 
is you have a series of questions and you need information in order for your team to make better decisions. And so you have to identify through your metrics is you got to say, hey, well, what are the things that are the leading indicators to sales? You know what, and and then you you start playing with payroll. Like let, let me let me give you an example. Pandora. I played with Pandora, and I tried to see whether or not Pandora was a, a viable, you know, avenue. And it wasn't. It, it, they, it, I had a very high bounce rate. I would turn. I, I would leave certain things on. And then I would and and I would only change one thing, and I found that Pandora was was a non-issue. Uh, I did the same thing in December with broadcast, which was I don't show it here because it was a December strategy, and and I turned off all the broadcasts off, and the sky didn't fall down, and uh, it was you know you, you, uh, we had some successes maybe you know it's hard to. The, the key here, the, the key here, I, I, I mentioned it earlier, you know, your advertising agency, you know, a lot of us are struggling, are saying, hey, our, our advertising budget is getting too skewed heavily in terms of digital. You know, you'll, you'll, start, you'll start looking at your budget and you're saying, holy crap, my, my, my advertising budget now in terms of uh, digital is 35%. And, you know, is that too much? And your a agency says, well, you should you should put more commercials and he's right but he's right for the wrong reasons it's the platforms that we're advertising today have changed not that 34 year old might be consuming his media and his commercials on his iPad and so if you're going to sell that soul or if you're going to sell that Optima or if you're going to sell that entry vehicle your commercials are not cable or broadcast they're not watching to, uh, the news so the role that the, the, the social behavior, that, that video revolution that Google announced that we were going to uh, incur in 2006 is happening. It's already there. Social behavior, the way this, the millennials we call them, uh, shop uh, has changed, has changed. Their habits are different. And we just need to be, we need to be able to push that math, those eyeballs and ears, towards the products that, that will interest them. Now, an RLX Acura, am I going to use it for pre-roll? Probably not. You know, am I, it, so I, you just got to use the same common sense that dealers have always had. We're, we're like, uh, you know, we're, de we're, we're, we're merchants, we're, and we just got to figure out how we use this technology for our benefit. And we just got to figure it out. And all I'm saying is, is that there's there's things that I'm going to learn from people on, uh, on the call. I'm going to learn from. I, I just you just got to keep an open mind and have measurements that you think matter. Because otherwise, you just you say so what? What what does website traffic mean? It means nothing. It means nothing if we're not selling cars. It doesn't mean it doesn't mean anything. It's just all this information just provides you trend analysis. And you're trying, and, and then you need somebody there in the meeting to say, so <laughs> you got to figure this all out. You got to, we got to all figure it out. And I think ILX really works for us. And it's so, and it, so with it's, with the screen that I have up with the overview, these are some of the metrics that you zero in on as you're, let's say, cutting a hundred grand in one area or adding something like pre-roll. Or and, and do you want to touch on any of the key metrics that you zero in on here? Well, I always look at I always look at my you know that sixty five percent. Every brand has their sixty five percent of models that drive volume, and so you want to look at trends there, and you want to see what it is that uh, you're doing if it's if it's. And then I want to look at market share because raw numbers in a vacuum like that don't mean anything. So I like to layer it with market share. And see if you're taking share. Um, and so those are the first. Those, that's why that's at the very top. My ups per department. You know how many salesmen, things like that. I, I look at it, and and then I look at what I'm doing in terms of the advertising. Um, the broadcast that you see there at the bottom. A lot of it was Hispanic, Spanish, and it's more of a branding message for the dealership. 
uh, uh, but you know, I, I'm just I, I think the message that I was delivering here, and I think the role that I'm I'm to help fill here on this is that I believe that pre rolls has a role, just like cable had a role. A lot of us in this call, uh, you know, 15 years ago said, "I oh, don't." Don't advertise on cable. You're wasting your money, you know. And then eventually we migrated to cable, and then now maybe, and then now it's just that same kind of migration. You're going. You're. You. What, what a lot of people don't realize. It's just a, a different platform that's delivering the same commercial to other eyeballs and ears. That's it. All right. Well, great overview and. We very much appreciate your willingness to come on. Uh, and yeah, I know there was I, reluctance because there may be somebody from Miami. So, <laughs> so, so thank you so much. And so with pre-roll, in addition to new models, you have the opportunity to do used car events. As a matter of fact, um, I know of some independent dealers that are focused on this. You can also get involved in service campaigns, and I'd like to share an example of a Mercedes store that uh, used pre-roll to get their message out. And I thought this was very clever because as you watch this, you'll see that the subtlety is, hey, consider Mercedes and consider our operation. Click here to service your vehicle with BD, where you'll get the BD advantage. That's free pickup, free delivery, free Mercedes-Benz loaner car, and free wash and vacuum anytime, anywhere. We bring the service to you. Whether you're in need of a wheel alignment, scheduled maintenance, or more extensive repairs, we've got you covered. We have 150 loaners and 45 drivers for your service needs. And we'll pick up your car at your home or office. Click here and contact DD today. Now, this uh, dealer owns the Volvo and Mercedes store. You can see that the spend was $750 on each one. As far as key metrics, 16 or 15.92 percent of the people on the Mercedes side watched all of it, 18 percent on the Volvo side. Just as a rule of thumb, if you're just getting involved in video, this is a key metric. If only 5 percent of the people are watching beyond 5 percent, you've got a boring spot and nobody cares. You should see, let's say, between 15 and 20 percent as a rule of thumb. Same thing with click-throughs to the website. You should have something of interest from a customer point of view. I've noticed a couple pre-roll spots where it's really coming just from the dealer perspective, and so that's going to affect the number of people that click over to the website. As a rule of thumb, it should be a 0.5 to 1%. And then what we uh, typically see is, let's say, 2 to $3 cost per click-through to the website. So let, let's move. Let's go to the uh, next area, video site mapping and video enriched landing pages. So regardless if it's pre-roll or pay-per-click, uh, what separates your website from the masses? And video site mapping is something that most, most of the website companies will allow. And it's simply placing a piece of code so that these landing pages that are video rich will allow that video content to be crawlable. So here's an example of a dealer using a video enriched landing page where they're integrating it into their site map so that if somebody in that Chicago market is looking for, in this case, a Lexus GS in Chicago, the video is popping up and it's one click not to a YouTube channel but directly to the dealer's website. Grace on wheels, the Lexus GS350 commanding the road. Like now I'm going to mute this so I can talk over it. What's nice about this is these are offers specific to this. Uh, these uh, can be configured in different ways where it usually would start with, let's say, the model itself and then move into why buy at the dealership. So a page like this could include uh, something about the dealership, a 60-second overview and or testimonials. Now, with these pages, uh, there's a product that uh, and think of your individual search results pages, which is where I, I assume the vast majority of you are directing your SEM um, clicks or your SEM traffic. So here's an alternative to consider where if you have a video on top of your SRP page, 
you have the ability to actually have the customer see this video uh, page. This exceptional offers. Oh, and again, I'm going to mute it so I can talk over it. They can see an expandable video link where you click on it, um, and you have a specific offer for that individual model. Or maybe it's an overview of the dealership. But these are initiatives that in five years, in my opinion, will be fairly common with websites because it's more interactive, it's more emotionally engaging. Now, with that, I think we have another poll question from Eliana. Yes, we do. Audience, I hope you're ready for this because it's, uh, it's only going to get better. Let me tell you, this is a great, great presentation. Thank you so much, Phil. All right. So the question is on the screen now. It's pretty simple. There's only three answers for you. Are you familiar with engagement light box advertisements? Please select one of the following answers. Is it yes, and it gives us great results? Is it you've heard of it, but you haven't tried it yet? Or what are engagement light box ads? So once we get a majority of these votes, we'll close the poll and share the results. And of course, as always, we want to thank you so much for getting involved in our poll questions. It really gives us uh, an overview. It shines a light on what's going on in the auto industry. So thank you so much for that. And uh, I don't see any more votes coming in, so I'm going to close this poll and we'll share the results. Are you ready for this, Phil? Yes, I'm, I'm interested in finding out what the... Shalini, you're going to want to see this too. Watch out. <laughs> Here we go. I'm ready. Okay, you're ready for this? Okay. <laughs> All right, so uh, share the results. Okay, 26% have heard of it, but they've never tried it. And the overwhelming majority. I don't even know if I've ever done a poll question with this, this high of an answer. 74% of today's audience said that they do not know what engagement light box ads are. And no one here has has tried it and said that it's giving them great results. So uh, I hope that answers your question, Phil and Shalini. Uh, it, the, the votes are in. The automotive I, audience I does not know about light box ads. So Shalini is by far the most qualified of all of us to talk about what this is. Great. Um, thanks, Phil. And I'm excited to talk to you guys about engagement ads. Um, especially given the poll results. So engagement ads are a great way to strengthen brand to audience relationships by making a rich creative canvas come alive so your consumers can directly interact with the content that you're looking to showcase. So consumers choose to engage with your ad by simply hovering over the teaser state of the ad for two seconds. Then there's a prompt where the ad will expand. In using a cost per engagement pricing model, you as an advertiser are only charged when the ad expands. So from a lead qualification standpoint, this could be considered a warm or even hot lead given that the consumer has taken the time to interact with your ad and more importantly with the content that you're showcasing. We found that users are 10 times more likely to engage with these types of ads than to click on a standard ad unit. If we move on to the next slide, you can see that you can choose from a variety of customizable formats depending on the channel and message. The key here is to really create a strategy that consists of a mix of lightbox ads to drive more in-depth engagement at all levels in the sales funnel. A few examples include the standard lightbox ad, the masthead lightbox ad, which allows you to extend the reach of your YouTube homepage ad, and a catalog lightbox ad, which lets users flip through your Google catalog see product details, and click to purchase on your website. Next, I want to share a case study we created on the success that Land Rover saw with Lightbox ads. With over 60 years in the automotive industry, Land Rover's car models have evolved, and so has their advertising strategy. Land Rover understands the importance of reaching consumers online, where they research brands and models before making purchase decisions. To create and build awareness, we worked with Land Rover to run an expandable YouTube masthead in Lightbox ad campaign um, as they launched their new, range, their new Range Rover model. The ad began as a standard IAB-sized unit, and then as a user would hover over the, that ad, it expanded 
into a, an experience where the user could interact with the car's dashboard. With this ad, Land Rover, Land Rover received 11 million impressions and 228,000 engagements in just 12 days. And I think Bill is going to be talking about some yeah. other results. Absolutely. And, and thank you for the overview. So what I love about Poncho, when he hears about new initiatives, and um, he's willing to give it a go. And so we have an example of how you as a retailer can use Lightbox uh, display advertising. And so the spend was $500. And you can set these up through either AdWords or DoubleClick. And so here's an example of what it looks like. So somebody's on, let's say, a page. They hover over it, and it the expands out. The giving the competition a run for their money with a fusion of bold styles, grin-inducing performance, and advanced technology. It truly challenges mid-sized sedan convention. Click now. Esterman has over 90 Optima models available for sale, all at similar savings. Starting so... That's kind of an overview. As, as I mentioned, the spend was 500. We ran this just for a couple weeks. There were over 3,000 expansions. The engagement costs worked out to about 17 cents, and the rate was 5.42. So when these initiatives become available, as Poncho had mentioned, it won't work for every individual model. But if you believe in digital, the focus should be testing in your individual market with the brands that you guys are involved with to see specifically what happens. Now, with this, we are going to focus on some other hot initiatives with Google and how Google can help drive uh, service. And I think we have an additional question, Eliana? Yes, we do. Audience, this is your last poll question, and it's your last chance to get involved in our poll question today. So I'd really like to see all your involvement on this. The question before you is, what is your current advertising digital strategy for your service department? Very important, service department. Please select one of the following answers. I have a digital ad budget for service that's equal to sales. I have one to two pages about service on my dealership website. I have a dedicated service website. We're only sending out direct mail for our service department, or we do almost nothing for our service department. We want to know what's going on at your dealership. What kinds of things are you doing for your service department? Once we get a majority of those votes in, we'll close the poll and we'll share the results. And while None of these answers, I'm sure, encompasses everything that you do for your service department. Please pick the answer that's closest to the majority of what you do for your service department. We'd really appreciate it. Um, while those votes are coming in, I also want to let you know, I did get a question in from Bruce. Hey, Bruce. He says, are we going to get a copy of this presentation afterwards? There's a whole lot of information to take in. Yes, Bruce, I'm recording this for you, and a link to the recording will be sent out to you later today. Thank you so much for your question. And yeah, there is a lot of information in here. <laughs> so audience, thank you so much for your votes. Oh, thank you. He says we're awesome. Um, <laughs> so uh, let's get to these answers. Thank you everyone for voting. And let's share the results. 21% of today's audience said that they have a digital ad, bu ad budget for service that's equal to sales. Great. The majority, though, 53% of today's audience, said that they have one or two pages about their service department on their dealership website. Now, no one said that they have a dedicated service website. I'm actually kind of surprised at that. Um, really surprised at that. 12% of today's audience says that they're only sending out direct mail for their service department. And 15% says that they admit they do almost nothing for their service department. And just so you know, dealer on, I think we might be the only people in this space who actually do have a service website for our dealership clients. So if you're interested in a service website, you might want to consider that, just throwing that out there. But I will say, uh, I'm pretty sure that dealerships make, what, 70% of their profit through their fixed ops. So I'm kind of surprised we're not doing more to help them out. Phil, what do you have to say about that? 
Well, I kind of expected the answers. And as I travel around and visit with general managers, and I'm asking more and more, what are you doing from a digital perspective with service, most of the dealers are not applying even what they've learned from the sales side in service. So I think everybody is really going to be excited about some of these next slides um, because these are huge opportunities. And for everybody listening in, because I doubt that we have very many service directors or parts people on the line, I would highly recommend that you share this next piece with those folks. And so I'll turn it over to Shalini. Great. Thanks, Phil. Um, so one of the so one of the main questions we get asked is why should dealers invest in advertising that is focused on parts and services? Google believes that in order to be successful, you must always follow the user. Based on market research, we know that consumers are looking for information on parts and services. For example, there were 70 million aftermarket service searches done on Google.com in a month. And if you look at historical data for other advertisers in this category, such as click-through rates and CPCs and conversion rates, this traffic represents an opportunity of 525,000 customers a month just for parts and services. If your customers are happy with your services, they'll go on to evangelize your brand and dealership, which will result in referral traffic. And this could equate to another 100,000 customers. What I wanted to talk to you about are four main points. First, we'll talk about the importance of running non-branded keywords for parts and services. Now, this is something that most dealers don't historically invest in. They usually invest in dealer-branded keywords for two reasons. One, because the approach is cheaper, and two, because they're able to drive higher click-through rates with these type of keywords. However, our research shows that non-branded terms are critical to reaching shoppers and new customers. Four in 10 drivers never search on a branded term. 90% of non-brand paid clicks deliver a new customer. This helps generate both traffic and conversions. Second, ad position matters. And we found that ads which appear in the top positions are more likely to drive conversions than ads that show up on the right-hand side. Point number three is the importance of creating a multi-channel campaign. Strategies should span across all devices, and we should be leveraging sophisticated targeting to reach consumers at the zero moment of truth. That's at the right time, at the right place, with the right message. And the last point is that non-brand drives incremental brand demand. We've seen a 54% ROI increase when advertisers use a combination of branded and non-branded keywords. Two in five drivers search exclusively on category terms. The source of this information is from a study that Google did with Millard Brown Digital Auto Parts in 2013. In looking at the example, if you don't have a paid presence on non-brand terms, it will negatively impact all stages of the purchase funnel. It's not just about driving awareness. We've seen that non-branded keywords, especially for parts and services, are just as critical in driving traffic and conversions for your business. Four in five users use category terms at some point in their path to purchase. Just to clarify, when we say category terms, we're for, we're, we are referring to non-branded keywords. So imagine searching for terms like auto parts, car battery, transmission, oil filter, as opposed to including branded keywords and terms. 82% of users search on non-branded keywords. A majority of the new customers come from non-brand keywords. So imagine if I was stuck on the side of the road, which I hope I never am, and needed assistance, and I didn't have my insurance card handy, I would search for how to solve the problem at hand as opposed to searching for a specific dealer. My search is going to be generic, and when I do the search, I'll get an ad from the dealer that can provide the service. That's when I'll contact the dealer directly. And looking at the graph, we've segmented the customers into two types prospects, which are any users who have not visited any parts and services sections on your website, and existing customers, those that have visited a parts or services page on your website in the last 90 days. We found that prospects comprised 90% of all clicks on non-branded terms, demonstrating that non-branded terms are really more likely to drive site visits from new drivers than existing customers. Non-branded terms also drive brand demand, engagement, and sales. 
So if we go back to the example that I just gave, if I was ever stuck on the road, again, in the same exact location, I wouldn't need to search for the category term. I'd be more likely to search for the actual dealer at that time. And looking at the graph, you'll see two columns, one that talks about the value of the impression and the other that talks about the value of the click. What this tells us is customers that were exposed to the ad and didn't click are still two times more likely to visit a site than those that have been exposed to the ad. According to the study, we also found that when ads are in the top position, they drive six times more conversions. So to recap, use non-branded search to, to acquire customers and build brand engagement. Bidding higher on non-branded keywords is a great way to drive new customers, brand, and interest sales. Remarket once you've exposed them to your brand using non-branded keywords. And most importantly, rethink attribution to evaluate the impact of non-branded keywords. Now, I also wanted to talk about the importance of mobile and having a very robust and sophisticated mobile advertising strategy. One in five users use a mobile device to shop for parts. Um. Sorry about that. Great. When, when users are looking at information around parts and services on their devices, they're really looking to cross shop. And they're looking to compare to get the best deal possible by searching for deals and discounts. Users looking to book service appointments are looking for credibility. The two most common actions taken when users find a store after performing a search on their phone are, one, getting directions, or two, calling the dealer directly. All dealers should have an e-commerce presence where they can sell parts and have an area to make bookings for services. The reason that this is important is because individuals on a mobile device want to find information and take action instantly. Nearly 50% of mobile auto users look to make a purchase within a day, and 36% convert within hours. If the site is not fully optimized or does not have an e-commerce presence, the opportunity will be lost. Mobile ads have click-through rates of 40% better than desktop ads, and 28% of mobile commerce activity is based on interaction with ads. The mobile users are 65% more likely to do business with a dealer if they have a mobile-optimized site. An e-commerce site drives sales, increased traffic, and engagement. So just some key takeaways here are users are searching for auto parts on their phone, they're looking for price information. And when users are searching for auto services on their phone, they're really looking for credibility. Users find local stores and take actions such as calling the business or looking up driving directions. And mobile devices, sorry, mobile drive sales through e-commerce. This further shows the importance of having a strong mobile strategy. The most successful advertisers are those that are able to optimize for each channel format, and stage in the sales cycle to generate, qualify, and convert prospects to customers. Um, with that, I'd like to pass it back to Phil. Thanks, Shalini. And that's great content. A couple of the key points that I zeroed in on when initially I was exposed to this was the non-branded component and the importance of just zeroing in on service and or parts. And so, Great information. Thank you so much for uh, sharing that. So as a conclusion, here are the key points that we would suggest of every all the information that we uh, shared today. Number one, get involved with video pre-roll. You can run campaigns as low as $500. These are not $10,000 initiatives. Number two, get involved in video enriched landing pages and video site mapping provided with the second component, provided that your website company will allow you to do that. Number three, test out Lightbox. You know, this is a display opportunity. Uh, the video enriched uh, opportunity takes, takes this to the next level. And the final piece is 
everybody on the phone should be visiting with their service and parts director and talking about digital strategies for the service uh, arena and the parts, parts department. So with that, I'm going to turn the meeting over to Eliana. Thank you so much. Wow. I love when I do a webinar and I learn a lot of stuff, so I know our attendees also learned a lot of stuff. Attendees, if you haven't gotten your questions in yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. Now is a great time to send in your questions for these two amazing presenters, uh, Shalini Jarawala from Google and Phil, Mr. Video Sura. I want to hear from you, so please get your questions in as quickly as you can. I do have to give a prize away though right now. So if you missed it at the beginning of the webinar, well, I announced that our good friends at Unity Works Media, whew, they're giving away such a nice prize today on the webinar. It's a great prize for your dealership. And one, only one of you lucky webinar attendees is going to score a model video landing page free for three months. Plus, it's going to come with an About Us video from Unity Works Media. It's going to provide you with a highly engaging campaign destination page that will increase your conversion rate. This prize is valued at $775. All you have to do is answer a simple question about today's presentation. First one to write in the correct response is going to win an awesome prize. So get to your keyboards, get ready. Good luck everyone. And you would have had to really been paying attention to get this one. So I hope, I hope, 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 fingers crossed, at least one of you caught this. And vendors, if you're out there, please sit this one out. This prize is only for those people who want to try out this offering from Unity Works Media risk-free. We would appreciate that. All right, everyone, good luck. Here's your question. How much of the video pre-roll has to be watched to be billable? How much of the video pre-roll has to be watched in order for it to be billable. Oh my goodness. Well, we do have a winner. It took a little while to find that winner because a few people wrote in the wrong thing. But I will tell you this. Phil, why don't you tell the good folks out there what the correct answer is? It's the entire video or 30 seconds. So if it's only a 20 second spot, they have to watch all 20 seconds. What we usually recommend is have 30 seconds or 35 seconds for the pre-roll. So it's 30 seconds or the complete video. That's right. And the first person who answered that question correctly was Tamara Swats. She has been a winner on my show before, but she got this one right. right. She was paying attention. Tamara, congratulations. Although I know you've been a winner before, I, I have to admit, I don't remember where you're from. So if you could please write on in so I can give you a proper congratulations. I would really appreciate that, Tamara. And uh, yes, a lot of you did get it correct. Thank you so much. Um, and Tamara still hasn't written. Ooh, ooh she goes, woohoo, woohoo. Thanks. I am super excited. <laughs> she is in Tallahassee, Florida. Happy Independence Day to all. Tamara, what? What dealership you from, baby? <laughs> oh, here she goes. Legacy Toyota with so many exclamation marks after it, I can't even count. Tamara, you just won yourself a great <laughs> prize for your dealership. Congratulations. I'm sure you're going to get a lot of use out of that one. All right, Phil, you heard the lady. We want to, of Congrats. course. Congrats. <laughs> That's great. Congratulations to Tamara and, of course, to Legacy Toyota. And, of course, we want to thank our great friends at Unity Works Media for their incredible generosity. All right, audience, we're going to get ready to – we only had a couple questions that came in from our audience today. So, audience, if you have some more questions for our amazing presenters, please get them on in. I want to – we got somebody from Google here. How could you not have questions for her? <laughs> so here we go. Our first question for you guys comes from Samantha. And Samantha wants to know, how would you recommend – overcoming objections from a general manager that is skeptical about new ideas and likes doing things, quote unquote, the old school way. For example, he doesn't believe social media and internet leads are as credible as those people who call in. I, Samantha, I feel for you, my friend. I remember not too long ago, and when I say not too long ago, I'm saying within the last 12 months, I remember meeting a dealer who really believed that the newspaper ads were still the way to go. Like, he wanted to spend more on newspaper ads than anything else. So, Samantha, I feel your pain. And Phil and Shalini, 
what can you recommend to Samantha and others like her who are fighting an uphill battle with those people in management who still don't believe that digital advertising is what they should be doing? All right, so I'd like to start because I deal with folks like this on a weekly basis. And it seems to be a generational issue. In other words, the general managers that are, let's say, over the age of 45, for sure those that are over the age of 50 have a hard time understanding the impact and the power of YouTube because they, they still associate YouTube as being, let's say, an opportunity to watch videos that are unrelated to automotive. And so uh, a quick example, I had a, a dealership meeting where on the left we had the marketing team and the e-commerce folks, and they were all under the age of 30. On the right, I had the fixed operations director and the general manager, and they were over the age of 50. The contrast was incredible when we were talking about pre-roll. Those on the left immediately saw the opportunity, so this is a no-brainer. We're on YouTube all the, time, all the time. On the right, it was just the opposite. Well, I never go to YouTube. And so a way to overcome that is to play this video, especially with Poncho's comments to get them to understand it's a brave new world and that uh, this, this whole concept and some of the toughest guys that I've dealt with are the ones that were hugely successful for a long period of time and change is really, really hard. But if you play this video and have the general manager just watch the first part, if nothing else, and say, look, this is a pretty successful guy. They're number one with their brands in a pretty tough market, Miami just listen to it, that would be a strong recommendation. Point number two, tell them to test the waters with a small campaign and measure it for, let's say, two months and allocate, let's say, $750 or $1,000. Let's say $750 if the guy's really tight. $750 for a 60-month campaign and, or 60-day campaign, I'm sorry, and just convince them after he watches the, the video, say, let's try it. We have nothing to lose. $1,500 over 60 days and see specifically what happens. If you do that, most dealers and or GMs, most of them will say, okay, we'll give it a shot. Shalini, do you have anything to add to that? That was great stuff, Phil. Um, yeah, Thank I mean, you. I would just say that data is king, and just as, <laughs> you know, Phil said to test it out, I mean, it is a great exercise to test out a campaign, and the wonderful thing about being online and using digital advertising is that you're able to track the results and actually measure them. Um, I do understand the importance of traditional types of advertising and, you know, sending out mailers um, and direct mail type campaigns, but the hard part is, is that it's really hard to track the engagement, the level of interest, and overall the number of sales that are actually coming in, whereas through a digital campaign, you can do that um, directly. And what we're finding is that with new channels and new formats, such as mobile, such as video, we're able to really understand what type of message resonates um, with the audience that we're looking to target. And with direct mail, you just can't do that. So what I mean by that is let's say that you have a video and you see that people actually engage with that video for 30 seconds, and you know the content in that video is actually very engaging and reaching the right audience, and they want to learn more. Whereas with the mailer, you never know. And so what I would also recommend is using the learnings from your digital strategy to really enhance your offline activities. And so even if they're opposed or hesitant to really adopt digital, maybe the message there is use digital to enhance your offline activities and your traditional media activities by really understanding what your consumers are looking for. Well, there you have it. Samantha, I really hoped that this amazing answer helped you out. Please write on in and let me know if you have any other questions. And Phil, to go to your point, we do have a question that came in from Andy. He said if he's just starting out with video pre-roll and lightbox advertising, could you recommend a starting budget for both? Now, I know you said yeah, 1500 so, over 60 yeah, days, but... Absolutely. I'm sorry. Yeah, so a suggestion would be for, ask him uh, how large is this market? Ask him what the uh, population is. Is he in a small market or a big market? Andy, you heard the man. <laughs> Let's write on in. Write on in and let me know. And Samantha 
says, by the way, that really did help, so thanks, and she was one who asked the first question. And Andy says he's at a smaller dealership in a medium-sized market. That's all he wrote. Okay, so tell him the test, or I'm, you can hear me. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Andy. Phil's going to talk to you now. <laughs> That's right. Hey, Andy, I'll talk directly to you. Uh, Andy, try $500 for the pre-roll, and for the light box, uh, try 300 if you're in a mid-sized, smaller market, and that keeps it under $1,000 as a total spend. And, and then test the results uh, for each one and see specifically what drives, uh, what drives the needle. And would you recommend, you know, when he asks his management, would you recommend him saying, hey, let's just try this out for one month? Is one month enough to get uh, the results I'd down? Six, or? Two, two months. Two months. 60 days All would right, be a recommendation, fair. yes. Andy, yes. I hope that helps you out. Good luck with that. Uh, our last question, unless somebody else writes in a question for me, is from Katie. Katie writes in, as a smaller dealership with a limited marketing budget, of these takeaways, which would you recommend as a starting point? Great question, Katie. Phil, Shalini, either one of you want to take on this one? I'd say pre-roll because it's been tested. We've been involved in pre-roll for a couple years now, and I don't care if it's a small market or a large market. We've done really well with the dealers to really drive results with sales and or service. Most of the guys dive into sales, but if you have the service with a twist, like the Mercedes store that I showed you, that's pretty effective, too, getting the word out there. So recommendation would be pre-roll, from my point of view. Shalini, opposing point of view, perhaps? <laughs> <laughs> not, not opposing, but complimentary. I would say that the key takeaway is to really have a cross-channel um, strategy. So it's really bringing together um, you know, standard ads, as well as pre-roll, like Phil mentioned, as well as really optimizing your mobile presence. And it's really important to have all three in play in order to drive the most conversions. I couldn't agree more. And with that, we're going to close out this webinar. Shalini Jarawala, it was a pleasure having you here from Google. Thank you so much. You are brilliant. And I look forward to doing another webinar, hopefully with you, sometime soon. And hopefully I'll see you at the next convention or something like that. So thank you so much. I want to thank let you, you know. Thank you for the opportunity. It was great. Oh, thank you. I really do appreciate it. And Phil, since this was yeah. your brainchild to put this together, of course, how smart are you? I want well, you to know people I like... Leo are writing, and he said, great webinar. I can't wait to watch it again and again and again. <laughs> well, well, thank you. And it's good to be uh, surrounded with smart friends. So <laughs> it, 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 that's always a benefit. That's how so I feel every happy. week. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and Katie wrote in, she says, sometimes I feel like I'm flying blind in this digital marketing world, but webinars like this are so very helpful. Katie, I couldn't agree with you more. Thank you so much, audience. Don't worry, guess what? I recorded this for you. So we're going to be sending out that link a little bit later today. Oh, I also want to let you know, since we were talking about um, service and the different things you can do online to digitally market your service department, I want to let you know we do have an upcoming webinar with Peter Leto from Google. And that's coming up on August 7th. So you may want to put that one on your calendar as well. He's going to talk specifically about digitally marketing your service department. So let your service people know about that as well. And, and Peter Leto is amazing. So yes. I would definitely pen that into your calendars because it will be a great session. Um, he's actually been my mentor as I've been getting up to speed in the auto industry, so I would highly recommend <laughs> attending his webinar. Yes, I've been fortunate enough. He's been actually on the show, I think, two or three times with me, and every time he's on the show, man, he is just, ooh, he's, he's sharp, and he's so generous with his time as well, so you can guarantee that you come in and you ask a question, he's going to be there to answer it for you. He's, he is great, so put that on your calendar. It's August 7th. And all of our Dealer on webinars are always held at 12 noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain Time, and 9 a.m. Pacific. And, of course, I've got to talk to you about the survey. People out there, please, when you get the survey in just another minute, please fill it out. We always want your feedback. And I want to know what you thought of today's presentation, how you thought Phil and Shalini did. So please fill out that survey. And 
we're going to check out those completed surveys and pick two of them at random, and those people will also win some Google Prizes. So another chance to win. You have There's no downside. We just want to know what you thought, all right? Also want to let you know that Dealeron is excited to announce their involvement at the upcoming Dealer Think Tank in Washington, D.C. on August 14th. And if you haven't heard about them, well, guess what? You're going to want to go check them out. You can go check out some more information at dealerthinktank.com. But let's just say they have intensely informative, fun-filled education workshops, and they'll educate everyone from the greenest of the green to the most seasoned industry veteran. So we don't want you to miss it. If you haven't gotten your ticket yet, well, Dealeron is here to help with an exclusive discount code. It's going to help you with $100 savings off of the ticket price. So use that discount code on your screen when you register, and I really hope we see you there. And by the way, invitations will be going out tomorrow for our next webinar, When a Stranger Calls, with two of our industry's best and brightest, Jerry Tebow and Joe Webb. So cue the scary music. I don't have any scary music, but cue the scary music and picture this. The phone rings. Ah! It's a sales call. Inevitably, how it's handled may send shivers up and down your spine. Your dealership is wasting opportunities. You're scared your sales, BDC, and internet team are sending future customers running in the other direction. You need your phone calls to be handled the right way and stop sounding like a horror show. In this informative and entertaining webinar, two of our industry's top phone and internet sales trainers, Jerry Tebow of Phone Ninjas and Joe Webb of Dealer Knows Consulting, are teaming up to provide proven, profit-generating tactics to convert more prospects to appointments than ever before. Attendees will learn essential steps to handling inbound sales, proper outbound follow-up, dealing with vendor-related calls, and key elements of what to do when a stranger calls. So don't miss this opportunity to see two industry powerhouses in one thrilling presentation. And like I said before, our weekly webinars are held every Thursday, 12 noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific time. And we have some awesome webinar subjects planned for this year. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions about these webinars and our topics, contact me directly. I love hearing from you. Again, my name is Eliana Raggio. I'm everywhere online, Google+, Facebook, Twitter. I'm on all the automotive social networks. You can email me directly at eliana at dealeron.com. And I dare you to get in touch with me. Thank you all so very much for spending this time with us today, and I hope to see you all on a future webinar in our continuing education series, and of course, on behalf of everyone on this call now, and at DealerOn, we want to wish you all a very happy and safe Independence Day weekend. Have yourselves a good one. I'll catch you next week.